Paramatma, as Paramatma sees everything. You are like the air, as the air goes everywhere. So you are in my heart and you know that I am not satisfied. But what is the reason? I don't know. So even Piyasate, who is Guru of our Guru, of our Guru, when he has some lacking in his life, he needs the help of his Guru to, work, to speak of us. We are not Piyasate. We are not so qualified. So how necessary it is to receive the instructions of Sri Guru. So then Narad told to Piyasadev, O oh, Piyasadev, you have written so many things, but the minds of the people of the world has become confused. Why? Because in the Vedic literatures you have written about the path of karma. In the path of karma, one should perform one's duties very, very strictly. One should serve one's mother and father. One should uh, perform one's duties in society. And all of these social obligations, this is the path of dharma. And it is considered to be quite respectable in Vedic society. But Nara told Vyasadev that Chaktva so dharmam charnam bujam hare bhajana pakto ta patentato yadi yatra kva vabhadram abuddha musikim kovata akto bhaditam so dharmata Hey Vyasadev, you told everyone to follow their dharma. But why didn't you tell them that if they will leave all of their dharmas just to do bhajan, to serve the Supreme Lord, and even in that endeavor, if they are not successful, and they fall away from the path of bhakti, even. But still, for that person, there is no loss whatsoever. Because he has begun this, the relationship between the soul and the Supreme Lord. So he has made some progress. And one day, he will definitely attain perfection and become perfect. On the other hand, if a person completely performs all their dharma perfectly, but they don't do bhajan, they don't do bhakti, then they gain nothing, their life is completely wasted. Vyasadev, have you told this anywhere? Srila Vyasadev said, Oh Gurudev, I have not explained this. He hmm? said, Oh, then what have you explained? He said, In the Vedic scriptures, you have described about jnan, knowledge. Hmm? But what's the truth about jnan? Naiskaryam apyachuta bhava varjitam na shobate jnanam alam niranjanam kutapu na shashod abadra misurhe na chapitam karma yadapya karanam. If a person in this world has no attachment to anything, they are completely detached. Hmm? But one thing, they are not engaged in the service of the Supreme Lord. They have no conception of God and Bhakti. Then, Nashobitam Jnanam, Alam Niranjanam. Their Jnana, their knowledge is not beautiful. Even it will not give them liberation. So, if a person who is free from all desires but not doing Bhakti, they cannot be successful in life. Then, what to speak of those who are doing karmas and offering the results of their work? So you've explained about karma, you've explained about jnana, but you did not tell the defects of these things, and therefore glorify the path of pure bhakti. He said, hey Vyas, you have told about yoga in your scripture, but why don't you tell the truth about yoga? Yamadi bi yoga patai kamalo bhagatomahu makunda sevaya yadvat tadatmanam na shamyati. A person may do yamadi, means yam niyam, Hmm? And uh, prane, asana, pranayam, dhyan, dharan, and samadhi, ashtanga yoga. And by this, they can get some a little freedom from the disturbance of lust and anger. But even if they become peaceful, still their soul will not be satisfied. Because the quality of the soul, the nature of the soul, is only to render service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. So, Narad, he said to Vyasadev, have you written this? Have you written that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Etej Amsa Kala Pumsa, Krishna's too? Bhagavan Sayam. Have you written it anywhere? No, Gurudev, I have not written it anywhere. Hmm? Then you should write all of these things. Then Narad told him, have you written anywhere that the Supreme Personality of Godhead Though he is the creator and maintainer of all existence, though he is omniscient, he knows everything. When he appears in Vrindavan, at that time he plays as a small baby. In the form of Nishingadev, he has saved the universe. In the form of Lord Ram, he has saved the universe. In the form of Lord Varaha, he has saved the universe. 
But in the form of Krishna, he cannot save himself from a mosquito. If a mosquito will come to bite him, he will cry, wah, wah. And Mother Yashoda will have to come and chase away the mosquito. Hmm? He's maintaining the whole universe, but he's crying for his mother's breast milk. Have you written this? Have you written how the Supreme Lord, who is a Pramaya, he is immeasurable, no one can measure him. He has no inside and outside. Have you written that Mother Yashoda has taken a rope from her hair and bound him and tied him so that he could not run here and there in the house and make mischief? Yes, they said, oh, good day, if I have not written it anywhere. So now he said, oh, you have to write all of these things. He said, have you written of that? The Supreme Lord, he takes away the debt of all living entities. Hmm? Any living entity who, in this world who is born, they all have a debt. When you're born, you're born with a debt to your parents because they gave you this human body. You have a debt to the king for maintaining law and order. You have a debt to the cows who are giving milk and the bees who are giving honey. You have so many debts to the demigods who are giving fresh air and water and wind, fire, all of these things. So everyone is born into debt. But if one surrenders himself to the Supreme Lord, he becomes completely free from all debts. Hmm? That's true. But that very Lord who frees everyone from debt, have you written that when he met with Shimati Radhika and the gopis of Vrindavan, that he told them, hmm? Oh my dear gopis, I cannot repay you. Even if I were to live as long as Lord Brahma and be your servant for that time, I cannot repay Swasadukitya. It is in singular. I could not repay even one of the services that you have rendered to me. You have broken all the shackles of household life that are very difficult to break. So, what can I do? I, all I can say is, may you be satisfied with your own uh, saluta, your own wonderful qualities. So, now Rishi said, have you said that the Supreme Lord cannot reciprocate with the gopis of Vrindavan? No, Gurudev. He, he said, have you told that when Udav came to Vrindavan, he prayed, Vrindavan Eikimapi Gulma Latao Shadinam. Everyone knows that Udav is the great Vaishnava, but when he came to Vrindavan, he prayed, I want to become a blade of grass in the forest of Vrindavan, just so that my life may become fortunate by being touched by one particle of dust from the lotus feet of Shimati Radhika. Have you written it? Now I said, I have not realized these things, so how can I write? So then Narad, he gave blessings to Vyasadev. He blessed him. But without the blessing of Guru, no one can realize anything. Hmm? You know Prince Buddha, Gautam Buddha, he left his home, he went and sat beneath the Bodhi tree and did meditation. And he meditated very deeply. And he realized that everything was zero. Shunyavad. Shunya. Everything was nothing. So if one would practice meditation, but without the mercy of Guru, what do you realize? Nothing. Hmm? Like Buddha, you realize nothing. So, the Asadev, by the blessing of Narad, he went into meditation. Bhakti yoga na manasi sangyat pranihite male apasya purusham puna imayachata He went into the Bhakti Samadhi, into trance. How? He prayed, O oh Gurudev, I fully surrender myself unconditionally unto you. I give up my Vidya Buddhi. Vidya Buddhi means the idea that I know something, big problem. If someone thinks I know something, then they cannot realize it, Krishna. So giving up the buddhi, or I don't know anything, kindly reveal yourself to me. And then, by the mercy of the Narad Rishi, all the pastimes of Krishna, from his appearance in this world, his childhood pastimes in Vrindavan, his pastimes of grazing cows with his friends, the Ras Lila with Rajagopis, his leaving and going to Mathura and Dwarka until Mausalila, his final uh, winding up of his pastimes. The Asadev saw all of these things. Hmm? And he thought, Anato Pasamam Sakshad Bhakti Yoga Madhoksade Lokasya Janatovik Gangs Chakra Sattva When he saw 
the spiritual pastimes of Krishna on one side, and on the other side, he saw Maya, the material energy, and millions of uncountable living entities, jivas, like you and me, were floating, are floating, will be floating in the ocean of Maya, the material energy. He saw the spiritual world, the pastimes of Krishna, and the jivas in this material energy, and he knew that the only way to, to transfer the jivas from there, the material world, to there, the eternal service of Sri Krishna, was to hear these pastimes of Krishna as they are narrated in Srimad Bhagavatam. So by the mercy of Narada, he realized Krishna's pastimes and compiled them in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. And now I pray that we can hear the Srimad Bhagavatam from the lotus lips of Srila Gurudev. And by Srila Gurudev's mercy, we can be transferred from here to there. Today we are giving the rest of Haritapa. Tomorrow morning we had as announced seven thirty our temple Bhitti Patan will be given. So I request you all to be there. And after that tomorrow we will discuss after this and Bhat Maharaj Charitra, Bhat Maharaj Charitra and Pradha Maharaj. You should all be ready. Hare Krishna. So we all were so deeply absorbed in this Nectarian uh, Harikatha from Srimad Bhagavatam. And to have a place where we can have hear Harikatha constantly, we go to a temple. And by the mercy of Sri Gurudev and our, all the devotees, finally we have been able to acquire a piece of land in Houston. And tomorrow we are going to be having the Bhumi Puja, the worship of the land, before we start construction of the temple. So. This is certainly a milestone for our Sangha in North America as this is going to be the first temple which will be constructed from scratch upwards, straight from the land. And Gurudev's desire is to construct, this is just like our beautiful temple at Govardhan. So, so hopefully by his blessings we will be able to fulfill his desire. So tomorrow is a very auspicious day. We'll be having this Bhumi Puja. So everyone is requested to be there. Shripad Bhakti Vidhan Tirth Maharaj will be performing the Yajna, which will start at 7.30. Uh, the directions, if you need the directions, we will be sitting at the tables outside and you can get the directions. But briefly, when you go on to Highway 6, go north. So when you go out from here, you make a right. Go north on Highway 6. And when you cross I-10, you have to stay on Highway 6 only after about uh, 10 miles, uh, less than 10 miles. No, from here. 10, 10 miles, about 10 miles.